Hello, this is Joseph Drust. I am a senior character artist at Vicious Cycle Software, and this is a Pixelogic Z Classroom tutorial on baking out Mac caps. Before starting, I'd like to give a quick thanks to Ty Shelton for the use of his computer, and Susan Lau for the original concept of the model I will be doing the demo with. This tutorial is going to cover how to take a simple texture and using ZBrush generate out elaborate details with the MatCap system, then baking these details out into texture maps that can then be applied to the final model. To start off, you're going to need three things. The first thing you will need is a plugin called Image Plane from the ZBrush Download Center. To see if you have Image Plane installed, go to Texture at the top of your screen and see if there's an Image Plane tab. If you do not have an image plane tab here, you will need to go to the ZBrush Download Center and download this, since we will be using it in the tutorial. Next, we need a subdivided mesh with UVWs. Here we have a quick creature sculpt. This was done in ZBrush. As you can see, it has seven subdivisions. It has been unwrapped in 3D Studio Max and brought back in, so it has UVWs. Finally, we're going to need a quick texture through polypainting or other means. This texture was created through polypainting. As you can see, it is just simply blotches of color and no real details have been flushed out. Now when sculpting, I usually sort through a wide range of matte caps in order to find a precise look and feel that I'm trying to capture with the sculpt. Using the ZBrush matte cap library, I have downloaded a few. This first matte cap is called Loden 3. This matte cap is giving a nice surface texture across the top of the model. Next, we have Toy Plastic. This is a standard matte cap that comes with ZBrush. It has a high specular value, which generates a gooey surface across the model. And finally, we have DJ Inner Truth. This matte cap was also downloaded from the ZBrush matte cap library and has some variations that may possibly serve as a nice underlying texture to the model. Now that we've found a few matte caps, it's time to bake them out. The first step is to generate a displacement map from your subdivided mesh. Now this mesh that I'm using here is broken into multiple subtools. For this example, I'm just going to generate a displacement map for the body portion of the creature. So I'm going to first hide all other elements. In ZBrush, the next step to generate displacement is to simply go to Geometry, set your subdivisions to 1, and then go down to the Displacement tab. Once you're in the Displacement tab, make sure your resolution is set for your final texture map. In this case, 2048 by 2048. Also make sure that Adaptive is turned on, and then hit Create Displacement. Once you hit this, the mesh will subdivide, and you'll get a bar across the top of your screen. And here we have the final displacement map generated through ZBrush. And since this mesh did contain multiple subtools, I have compiled all the subtools together into one displacement. The next step is we need to crop and fill our canvas to match the texture size in which we're going to end up with, which is a 2048 by 2048. To do this, there is one simple way. First, make sure you have your final displacement loaded. Click on it, and then go to Crop and Fill. Hitting Crop and Fill will resize your entire document to the size. So now we have our document sized 2048 by 2048. Now that we have our document size cropped to the size of our texture map, we're going to first clear the canvas by hitting Control N. As you now see, we have a gray background. We're going to change this gray background to black, so we're going to switch color document, hit the document background color to black, and make sure the range value is set to zero. If the range value is not set to zero, you're going to end up with a gradient value in the back, and since this will be the background of our texture, you probably do not want a gradient. After this is done, make sure the material is set to flat color, and make sure you have your texture loaded, and now go to texture, and load image. What this is going to do, it is going to take your texture and apply it onto a plain 3D object, which will then be cropped to completely fill your document. As you can see, the plain 3D object comes in as a move tool on it. So we're going to first switch out a move into edit object. 
once we're in here, we're going to make this a poly mesh 3D. So go to Tools and right-click Poly Mesh 3D. The document will, the plane 3D object, which is now a Poly Mesh 3D object, will come in white. So we need to first load back into our placement and load back our diffuse. We should end with something like this. As you'll notice, this is purely just the poly painted diffuse texture applied to a plane. You're not getting any of the values or any of the stuff that we saw with the load and mat caps. To start getting these, we're going to first go to the material and take load in three. And so now we end up with a version that's pretty much the color load in three with the details of that poly paint diffuse underneath it. But still no values of any of the stuff that we saw before. So to get those, first we're going to go to the displacement tab over here and there's an intensity slider. We're going to take this intensity slider and first type in the value of, say, 20 and hit enter. Now you'll see that this intensity is now taking the displacement and applying it to the actual plane. So you see we're starting to get some of these values of the load in 3 actually baked into this object. Since this is a slider, you can change this to whatever value you want and we'll update on the fly. So typing in 10 will give us less and say typing in 30 will give us a little more. So just keep playing with that value until you end up with, you know, some value that you like. So I think 30 is probably going to do it from this. we got some IRAs I'm going to clean up, but it looks pretty decent. Now, to show you the power of this, there's three things that you can modify right now in this current state. The first is the intensity slider. The second is the mat cap. So first we can take any mat cap we have. So there's toy plastic. So now we get all these slime and gooey elements. We also have DJ Inner Truth, which was the other one we had. And you can see we're not getting these little reddish areas that were actually pulling out before on the final model, and now it's applied to this map. When these are actually loaded in, you can also edit the material value. So if you go to the material up here, and now edit these modifiers, and you can change the intensity of these. So say if I want this DJ Inner Truth to be a little bit brighter. Oh, there we go. Now we just keep changing these until we get exactly what we want out of the material. The final thing.